been getting my hair cut by the same woman, Viviana, for in the same place, Nash Hair Design in Falls Church for almost 14 years. So yes, it's in Falls Church, which is around the corner from where I used to live. So yes, I actually drive all the way from Kensington to Falls Church to get my hair done. And I can always remember how long she's been doing my hair because I was about eight months pregnant with Jack the first time she trimmed my hair. And so she likes to tease me about when she first started seeing me. Because I had long hair, which hung all the way down to the center of my back, and it was all basically one length. Didn't have much style to it, and my only requirement was that I was able to get it into a ponytail. Plus, I was much younger at that age, and I could pull off almost anything with my hair. And if, she, if you ask her, she will tell you, she has said this many times, that when I first started to go to her, I had virgin hair. It had never been colored. I didn't use any hair products. There was nothing more to it than what God had placed on my head. So today, I would like for you to go to the beauty shop with me. If you're a guy, this may be a little bit of a stretch, but I have been to the hair salon enough to know that men sit in those big comfy chairs waiting for their wives or girlfriends or daughters. And I happen to know that some men or teenage boys prefer to go to the beauty salon over the barbershop. So anyway, you're in the chair, and this is how it goes. Your stylist walks up and runs her fingers through your hair, ascertaining just how bad the situation really is. And then she ushers you back to the hair washing station. Somehow, someone else sudsing up your hair or running warm streams of water over it and smoothing conditioner into it feels a little bit like heaven. Feels much better there than it ever does at home. Well then, after that, your hair is tightly wrapped into a towel turban and back to the hairstylist chair you go. And now, you are at the stylist's mercy. When I sit down in Viviana's chair all these years later, she is practically wringing her hands with anticipation of what I will now let her do to my hair. And I'm typically pretty willing to let her just do whatever she wants, especially if it comes to styling, because I figure there's not too much she can't do that a good hair washing won't fix. Well, her favorite thing to say to me, and I know why she says this, to get a rise out of anybody that's sitting around me when I happen to be there, because she says it almost every time, uh, she will ask me if I want my hair flipped up in the back or rolled under. And I usually say, you know, do whatever you want. It's the one day every six weeks where my hair will look good. And she says, good, I'm going to give you sexy past your hair. <laughs> and I walk out, and it's the one time my hair looks that good. So Viviana, she knows me very well. As um, so well that when I was in Boston, uh, she called my cell phone to see if I was okay after the marathon. And this was very surprising to me. But I had been in about two weeks prior to the marathon, and she remembered that I was running it. So I guess she really does listen to what I have to say. And that is the reason that I trust her with my hair. In 14 years, she's seen and heard a lot of my life. Plus, she's never done anything too outrageous, like wiping tears or cleaning feet or drenching it in perfume. You may have been wondering if I was going to ever get to the God, Jesus, or Bible part here. But I don't want us to actually jump too fast into the Bible. So I want you to go back to Viviana's chair, and you're going to sit there. And I don't want you to think about whether you're going to have awesome looking hair when you leave, although I guarantee if Viviana was doing your hair, you would. But I want you to sit and to take 
take in what's going on around you as you are in that chair. Sitting behind you is the woman who has just had her first baby after having had three miscarriages. And she is gushing. And the stylist is there listening to it all. Nodding because he knows. Because he's been cutting her hair and listening to her for years now. And then there's also the woman that's getting her hair done for her wedding. And so she has curls pinned up on top of her head, and she can't stop wriggling around in the chair. And the princess just oozes out from her, as the whole world is a bit of buzz around her. Who knows how long it's taken for her to find true love, or how many times her heart's been broken. But her stylist probably knows. Seen her through a lot. And then sitting to your right hand side in the comfy chairs is a woman who's flipping through a Vogue magazine which is six months out of date. And it doesn't really matter that the magazine is that old because she has her mind on other things. Nobody knows what the other things are. She seems aloof and self-centered, not giving anyone the time of day. But her stylist knows that something is up because she's thinner than she used to be, and her hair is more brittle, and she's just not that chatty anymore. And then, of course, there is the loud one, the one in the salon that draws so much attention to herself because she's just so loud. You can hear her from any corner of the salon. And some of what she's saying, well, it doesn't really seem to be for public ears. The partying and the guys and even some of the language she chooses to use. And we all, we roll our eyes behind her back, silently thinking, just be quiet. She'll be the talk of the town later for sure. We all came here to get our hair done, not to be interrupted by her. We each sit in our chairs hoping that when we leave, we're going to look good and we're going to feel good. And this woman is totally ruining that feeling. But her stylist just listens. And he's been watching her in the mirror as, he's, as she's been talking, nodding and listening as she rambles and rambles. And at some point, he puts his scissors down and he walks around in front of her, leans up against the counter, and just listens. The haircutting has stopped, and he hears whatever she has to say. It's no wonder that she will lay her head into his hands, because he doesn't seem to mind her audacious personality. In every single chair, sits a scandalous woman, the forgiven sinner, and the only one that knows why she's loud, why she's withdrawn, why she cries at night, or why she's done the things she's done, and even why she loves beyond compare, is the man that holds her head. And in each chair sits a Simon, the righteous judger, and the only one that knows why he's insecure and judgmental, why he needs to prove himself to others, and why status matters so much to him, and why forgiveness is so hard for him to give and so hard for him to receive, is the man that says to him, place your head in my hands. And Simon thinks his hair looks great just the way it is. Simon doesn't think he needs to be forgiven. He doesn't think anything about him needs to change. And he also doesn't think the woman deserves to be there in the hair salon. Now, I'm not saying that Simon is ugly. As a matter of fact, in the stylist's eyes, Simon is beautiful. Simon just doesn't know it yet. Because he doesn't know what true beauty looks like. 
Simon has done all the right things, followed the fads, and outwardly looked the part. But he doesn't know that looking good in other people's eyes won't offer him what he so desperately longs for. Acceptance and forgiveness and love. None of that comes from looking a certain way. And the woman knows that the only one that could do something with the mess in her head and the unruliness in her heart, which made her whole life feel frazzled, like a perm gone bad in the tropics, was this man. She trusted that if she laid herself in his hands, he could do marvelous things. This man could do for her what no other place and no other person could. He could make her transform through acceptance and forgiveness and love, which is a sheer blessing. Something so beautiful that it breaks her heart and all she can do is bear it out there for everybody to see. How could one not turn and take notice of her? She's not the same woman she once was. Freedom has made her beautiful. And this may be just the best kept beauty secret around. Much better than perfumed hair or those purple stripes she was contemplating. The fact is, no one can make people see their own beauty better than a good beautician. And Jesus Christ, the best stylist around. The only problem with Jesus is he just doesn't always listen. See, if I tell Viviana that I don't want my hair shorter, or I don't want it blonder, or I don't want it sexier, she listens because that's how she gets paid. But Jesus, he'll get a hold of Simon's hair eventually. Not actually just his hair, but his heart too. See, Jesus may let you go blonde for a while, even if he knows you look better as a brunette. And sure, he may let you express yourself for a bit with the rat tail down your back so you can fit in. And yes, he will also let you tame the locks yourself. But eventually, his careful washing of your heart and precise cutting out that which harms you and his keen eye for true beauty will transform you. So much so that you may not recognize yourself. And it may just cause you to lay down at his feet weeping with gratitude. Because finally this is the look that you are going for all the time. Acceptance and forgiveness and love. It looks amazing now. There's a lot that's going on here in this little beauty shop. And most of it has very little to do with hair. Here at the beauty shop, we see joy and tragedy, forgiveness and judgment, love and skepticism intermingled. Here at the Pharisee's house, we see joy and tragedy, forgiveness and judgment, love and skepticism intermingled. And dare I say, here in the church, we see joy and tragedy, forgiveness and skepticism love, and judgment. We are Simon and the woman as we sit down in the chairs of our lives. And the church could do worse than be a place where our flaws and our messes and our uglies are laid out. Because Jesus is here asking for us to lay our heads into his skilled hands. Beauty lies in becoming that which Jesus sees. <coughs> so what would you like to have done with your hair today?